Welcome to my channel, Balance Sheets Matter. Today we're going to be doing a stock analysis on Church and Dwight Co. That's ticker CHD. But before we get into the analysis, make sure to subscribe to my channel, Balance Sheets Matter. I do individual stock analysis videos. So if you want ideas for stocks potentially to buy or stocks to value traps to avoid, make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you do want me to look at a stock, leave it in the comments below. I do eventually get to most of the stock subscribers are requesting right now. So let's get into the analysis. But first, Let's, what is Church and Dwight Co? They're much more than basically just a baking soda company that they're a little bit infamous for. They basically have a vast portfolio of products now, including laundry products, cath litter, oral care, deodorant, nasal care, all sold under their brand. And this kind of gets into what their whole business is about is they basically do these strategic acquisitions over time. So that's really what's gonna grow the company going forward and what we need to judge them on that performance to see if it's a good investment. First thing I like to do, I'd look at some of these top level metrics. We can see the groove focus value band here showing around fairly valued. We'll see if that's somewhat accurate. They do have a high PE right now, 53, but that's because they're currently having a bad year because the forward PE is 28. So analysts obviously are expecting their earnings to recover very quickly. And they have a little dividend yield of 1.14%. So let's dive into the 30 year financials here. Basically, first check out the revenue trend. It's been pretty good. Revenue analysts are expecting it to continue increasing in the future. Last 10 years, 8% per year average revenue, basically growth rate, and pretty similar with the EPS at 7.9% as well. So let's put this to the 30 year financials here because I want to give you a little bit longer view and uh, perspective of basically Church and Dwight. And Let's get basically the first thing I like to look at, return on invested capital over weighted average cost of capital. And this is gonna be very important for a company like Church and Dwight because they are in the acquisition business. So we need to be seeing basically good numbers for what they're doing here. So you can see back when they were a little bit younger, the numbers basically weren't as high, but they have basically improved over the years and they're usually around 10 and just above, although right now they're having an off year because their earnings are a little bit lower. But their weighted average cost of capital is usually quite low, usually around 5%, maybe up to seven, maybe down to three. So this is very good that if they do need to borrow money or issue shares to do strategic acquisitions, they typically do make good use of that money and get good returns on it. So let's now look at basically this overall revenue trend. You can see long-term trend as we already saw, revenue growing very nicely. Also, we can see with the gross margin, you can see basically from about 2000 to I would say 2009, 2010, they were basically gaining competitive mode as their gross margin was increasing. Now this has peaked at about 45%. So they are becoming a little bit more mature of a company. And although it has decreased down to 42, or well, in the last year, 42.81, I think this is only temporary, which is mainly due to the global economic factors such as the supply chain issues and inflation problems that have been like across the world over the last two years. So I think it's very likely we see the gross margins recover to that 44 to 45 percent. But from the trend that they've been maintaining this, I wouldn't be expecting this to increase anymore in the future. And we can basically see a similar trend with the operating margin as it basically slowly crept up to about 20% and they've been maintaining 20% except for basically the last year, which is kind of our last two years where it's down to 11. Again, I think this is likely to increase to 20%. Next thing I like to look at is interest expense because you know that tells them how much, how, tells you how much more com this company can basically potentially do future acquisitions in the future and take more debt if they need to. And basically in 2008, they did start taking a little bit of debt, but their interest expense is relatively low. Even though it's increased up to 110 million in the last year, this may basically be due to a little bit of the interest rates if it's basically more short-term variable debt, but we're gonna to have to take a look about that later. But we basically look at what their operating income was. We look at what it was basically in 2021 and they were making over a billion then. So if we compare it to the amount of interest expense they have now of 110 million, you know, that's a pretty good one to 10 ratio, pretty solid. Uh, and hopefully we'll actually see this ratio improve in the future as their operating income will grow and we won't be seeing this interest expense grow as well. Basically, we go down, we see net margins. Net margins, similar story. Around that same time, they've kind of got up to these you know, mid-teen percentages, and that's where they've been maintaining, except for the last year or two. So that's probably where we're going to see them get back to again in the future, maybe around that 15% mark, you know, 12, 15, 16, 17, anywhere in there. And EPS, the same story as well. 
but basically also for the shares outstanding, you can see they were increasing their share count before up until about 2011 where they peaked at 292 million shares. And then they have been buying back shares, reducing their share count, returning capital to shareholders, and it's down to 248 million shares now. So this is another way they can basically help grow that EPS line. And if they are doing good acquisitions, this is just like another way to almost leverage their investments in those acquisitions because they're investing in themselves. And if they're growing well, they're investing in a company that's growing well. So that's a good sign. So now we basically look at their balance sheet. The current assets are basically just under 1.6 billion and current liabilities are at 1.1 billion. So this is a very good current ratio. They're in good financial you know, standing here. And a lot of these current assets, we almost have 400 million in cash cash equivalents and 461 million accounts receivable with the rest of you know, mainly various uh, inventories and stuff like that. And then basically total assets, we have $8.5 billion, although we do always have to look at the goodwill, which is $2.4 billion. And this is because basically they have been doing all these acquisitions along the way. When they pay more than what the assets are within the company, they get adds added to goodwill. And one thing I kind of forgot to show you earlier that relates to the goodwill and how we can tell that Church and Dwight has been doing very good acquisitions is when you look on their income statement, you look at basically this other uh, income or expense. Typically, you will be getting negative numbers when they're writing off their goodwill because when they're doing a fair value like assessment of their acquisition, they feel they overpaid for it. So the fact we're not really seeing almost any negative values except for way back here and even then they are very small what this is telling us is church and dwight is really good at doing acquisitions so this kind of tells us that they're doing what their business is extremely well and this may be a reason why their pe probably does be should be justified to be just a little bit higher but now we basically go down to the total current liabilities it's only sitting at 4.6 billion and that's basically giving us total stockholder equity of just under $4 billion at 3.9. But we do have to take out that goodwill of about 2.4, which I think of leaves us both 1.5 billion of tangible equity, which, you know, is a nice balance sheet. So, you know, we're seeing a pretty good overall strong, good balance sheet from Church and Dwight so far. You know, I like what I see there. It's good. Uh, basically in the cash flow statement, one thing that is kind of important to look at is what level are they depreciating their assets and what level are they basically having to invest and in, reinvest in plant property and equipment and also these acquisitions they're doing along the way because they just don't invest in their main business, they buy new businesses. So you can basically see uh, the cash flow from depreciation uh, is typically lower than the purchase of plant pro or it's higher than the purchase of plant property and equipment but once we add in the purchase of businesses along the way they typically are investing a little bit more each year than they're depreciating but this is just important to know that basically where their cash flow is going and it kind of makes sense how this is working out but you can see all these little strategic acquisitions they're doing along the way basically in 2022 550 million 550 million the year before or yeah no 550 million yeah and then uh 500 million in the year before that, 475, 50 million, 1.2 billion, 300 million, 75, 200. So almost every year they're finding new companies to buy. And for what we're seeing, they're not having to basically write down any of that goodwill. It's providing, you know, good growth for them. So they are doing a good job at that. And they do consistently be able to find basically opportunities, which is very important for a company like theirs. And then you can see basically they return this capital to shareholders by repurchasing stock. They haven't repurchased any in the last year, probably due to their low earnings and, uh, and basically the current economic climate. But before that, they're investing basically some nice money to repurchase their stock. And that's what we want to see for a company like this. And they also do put out a little bit basically of cash flow for dividends, which has been increasing over the years. And probably as they mature more, you probably will see this uh, dividend potentially go up in the future as well when they feel they're kind of reaching more of their, you know, max potential. That's typically how companies shift, though I don't think Church and Dwight is quite there yet. So let's kind of now take a look at the interactive chart, get kind of an idea of, you know, their valuation, what they're sitting at. First of all, let's look at the revenue with estimate here. Wait for that to pop up. You can see revenue trends going forward seem to be good. And also the EPS with estimate. And this is basically just what the uh, analyst averages are. So I'm just going to take off the price here and you kind of get the idea of that 
the earnings and the revenue have increasing, you know, at a very similar trend, although with the buybacks, we should be seeing the EPS slowly outpace it. There has been ups and downs, but overall, this kind of is averaging out to the trend. So what we had basically in the last year, an off trend where it kind of seems like we're reverting back because there's a few years before that were a little bit on the higher side. But, you know, going forward, this is like, you know, not bad EPS growth. You're looking uh, basically the end of 2023, 317. 339 to 369 so basically you know two years 317 to 369 that's i think about you know what's that 50 cents or yeah you know, yeah about 50 cents you know that's good growth for two years you know that's about their average they've been doing so it's you know very consistent company so let's take off those bring up the price to sales ratio so this is one of those companies that has had the multiple expansion on the price to sales but that's because their net margin has increased so let's bring that up and i'm just gonna kind of show those side by side so you can see kind of the theory of how these work together so let's get a little bit shorter chart here maybe on the 20 year and basically i'll take off the price to sales for now just so we can get here so you can basically see all the way until basically 20 uh, about say 10 11 and 12 when it basically started peaking around 12% here, the net margin was considerably lower before. So you'd be expecting to pay a lower price to sales ratio when Church and Dwight was trading at like, you know, a 7% net margin. But then once they got up to here, they got about to a 12. And even in the previous years, they're around, you know, 14 to 16%. And this is a one-off year where they are down to 7.7. So they're probably going to revert back, but I wouldn't be expecting to see this increase beyond these levels in the future. Realistically, you know, they might be hovering between this 12 and 16 going forward in the future from what everything else I'm seeing. And then now let's compare that basically to the price to sales and look at kind of a similar time period. And you can see basically the price to sales multiple expanded up into this period. And then it's kind of more started entering a sideways trading range. So you can see once it gets this little bit lower band here around, you know, just under three and a half, that's kind of where you can consider the value zone somewhere probably a little bit higher than that. We'll just call it three and a half there. Once you get to three and a half, you know, you're finding the good price to sales ratios to effectively buy Church and Dwight. And this is what I did is I did buy basically Church and Dwight back here when it was in like the mid to low seventies. And, you know, I'm just holding it now. So right now where the value we're at, you know, this probably is looking a little bit on the more fairly valued side. Although when you're getting a company that does provide good returns and is well run, you don't always want to sell it when it's very valuable. You want to keep holding it because you have that potential extra upside and that growth that's happening basically per year. And you can see historically also, if we look at the P ratio, is that historically they've typically traded pretty expensive. Like a lot of these dips on the low sides, they were just in the low 20 P low 20 PE range. And I've done a video on this before that sometimes the best companies do garner high PEs. And basically we don't see any really any problems with Church and Dwight. They're a well-run company. They have a nice basically growth trend. You know, they're buying back shares, returning capital shareholders. They do very good acquisitions. And typically companies that can get this consistent growth, have a strong balance sheet, aren't riddled down with that, typically will trade for these, what seems like a little bit more elevated PE ratios sometimes in the mid to low 20s. So this is one of these stocks that in the you know, low 20s, I think it's a good buy when it's there. So even with a 428 PE, I don't think it's necessarily a good buy right now, but you always have to realize there are these bad recessionary times, like, you know, the 2008, 2009 financial crisis where they did get hit. But even then at that point, there may be trading between a 15 and a 20. So overall, like, let's just, you know, take a look at basically the price chart behind this too. And you'll see that, even when you enter these bad times, you really just experience more sideways tra trading. So it really protects you on the downside when you do own good companies like this. Now let's also look at basically the, just the technicals chart here. And you can see this trend is just like tremendous is all I can say for it. It's just been going like basically up and to the right and you can barely even tell when recessions happen because they're kind of more, a little bit more of a defensive company in a way. So when there are those recessions, their drawdowns are very little. So again, this is kind of one of these companies that I think it's worth it to buy at the right time. I'm necessarily not necessarily looking at buying it now, but if the stock were to dip down again, potentially below the 
50 month moving average here, I would be considering adding more to my position. So, you know, those are my thoughts on Church and Dwight. I kind of hope you like the stock analysis. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video. If you do want me to look at the stock, put it in the comments and I'll see you in the next stock analysis video.